Welcome friends to another r slash I don't work here lady video. I know you don't work here, but could you hit the like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our first story of the day is by ABM 2014OH. Humanity isn't lost. Context, I work at a national carpet cleaning company and wear a black and yellow uniform. One day after getting off of a long day at work, I head to my local office supply store where the logo happens to be red. I'm in there buying raffle tickets for my workplace and wearing a gray and red jacket, should have thought about this before walking in, while browsing around the store just for the sake of it when another customer approached me and asked where the legal pads are. While I don't work at the store, and never have, I decided to try and help her locate where the item was, and by chance walked right up to them. She then made a comment about the prices, and I helped to show her a cheaper option. She then asked a question, and that's when I realized she thought I worked there. I explained to her that I didn't, and she looked so embarrassed and started apologizing, to which I replied that she didn't need to apologize. She was the absolute sweetest lady I've ever met to this day. Moral of the story is, be kind in a world full of hate and help others when you can. If you're in a store that you kind of know the layout of or you know where most of the items are and somebody comes up to you asking for help, would you stop and try to help them? Or would you still rather let them know you don't work there and hope they kind of leave you alone? Let me know what you would do in the comments down below. Our next story is by NotabotRN. Alcoholic neighbor mistakes me for the dandelion lady. Yeah, I don't know either. I live next door to an alcoholic. We bought the house over six years ago. Nice neighborhood near downtown. House next door seemed to be under renovation. Still is. Anyway, long story short, neighbor's shown her butt too many times to count and I've transitioned from sympathetic to get the freak off my lawn, crazy lady. I also believe she's dipped into alcoholic encephalopathy. My lawn dude, that's his title in my phone, name lawn dude. It keeps my life more simple to put where I know people from so when they contact me, I can remember why I have them saved i.e. Beverly, co-worker, etc. Anyway, lawn dude's at my house doing his lawn dude thing when crazy lady accosts him about dandelions, says he needs to do something about it. Poor lawn dude. I told him to ignore her and stay away from her and do not do any work for her because she has a history of not paying workers and accusing them of nefarious deeds during work to avoid having to pay them and offering services for services. Not true barter, this trade would be illegal in most areas of my country. No, I didn't tell him about that part, just said to try to avoid her and I wouldn't recommend to do any work for her. He said yes, she not seem okay, she smell like beer. English is a second language for lawn dude, but he gets his point across well. He asks me if he needs to do anything about the dandelions. I told him they are an issue, but I do not want to broadcast spray weed killer. Lymphoma anyone? And I'll get a dandelion tool to deal with them. Yes, I have dandelions. So does most of the street. So does crazy neighbor. In her world, everyone else is responsible for her issues, so her dandelions are my fault. Side eye at the piles of trash bags and household debris she has across her entire front lawn and driveway. Beginning a lockdown, I had a bit of time on my hands, no social obligations, limited patients needing to be seen at work. So I got out my dandelion tool I had bought and started to go, working my way from far side of the lawn away from crazy neighbor. It was drizzling that day, so I had on a baseball cap and my raincoat over my usual outside work attire, yoga pants and a t-shirt. This is roughly three weeks after Lawn Dude met Neighbor. Now here, you have to understand, I've had a lot of interaction with this woman. We've sat together over dinner, I've sat with her on her porch, she's been in my house, she knows me. Or she should. Granted, that was at the beginning before I decided she was beyond my capabilities. So Crazy Neighbor drives into her driveway, and I'm bopping along at a good pace, pulling out dandelions in my lawn with my earbuds in. I start to hear a shrill voice, so I look up and pull out my earbuds, and Crazy Neighbor's standing at the property line. She's been told to stay away, and asks me, Are you the dandelion lady? Are you going to do my house next? I'm like 10 feet from her lawn where she's standing. I said, crazy lady, I live here. This is my house I'm working on. She squints at me, OP? Yes, crazy lady, it's me, and no, I'm not doing your lawn. Go inside. She says, you don't want to talk to me? Earbuds go back into my ears. I look down and continue my lawn. Yes, crazy neighbor is in my phone as name, crazy neighbor. 
I think I have a great amount of respect for OP for how much patience they have with their crazy neighbor. When I was a good bit younger, I used to live in a place where I had a relatively crazy neighbor too. They felt entitled to be like the watchdog of the neighborhood. If they perceived anything as like a slight injustice, they would try to call whatever authorities they could. They would shoot off firecrackers if neighbors' dogs got close to their property, or people they just didn't like got close to their property. I think what sucks the most about living next to neighbors like these is oftentimes you didn't even do anything to this person, but they're still acting out against anybody they can. Obviously an OP situation, their crazy neighbor is a little bit more influenced by another thing, but there's just no fun to be had. It just sucks when it really cuts into being able to enjoy where you live. This next story is by Powlarb, Gas Station Pit Stop. Today's been a long day driving with the family. About six hours in, we stop at a gas station. I go into the bathroom, and as soon as I come out, this woman asks where she can find iced tea. I don't work here, lady. She laughed. I didn't. It was a great moment, truly. I love my mother, but I don't know why she would think I know where things are at a gas station I've never been to. I think we all just got M. Night Shyamalan right there. Hope he's trying to be slick saying when I walked out this woman asked where I could find something. To be fair though, whether it's your mom or not, how would you know where anything in this convenience store is? Why doesn't she just look around anyways? There's like four lanes max in a convenience store. By the time you get a hold of somebody to ask them where something is, you probably could have already searched the entire convenience store. Our next story is by Basil Butter Baby. Stop chasing tall people around the store. I was at the supermarket the other day, and I was wearing a jumper that resembled the uniform of the staff. I was walking around and I heard someone say, excuse me. I ignored it, figured that it was for someone else, and kept walking. I kept hearing someone trying to grab attention, and I thought it was for a staff member or someone's family member. The place was busy. Eventually, I got grabbed by the shoulder by some lady, and she says, I've been talking to you, maybe listen next time, and proceeds to tell me about what she needs and asks rudely where it is. I tell her I have no idea and walk off. She follows me and keeps pestering me, saying she'll complain to the manager until I turn around and tell her, look lady, I don't freaking work here, and walk away. Apparently that wasn't enough because she continues to shout after me and follow me, asking to get her some Pepsi off the top shelf because I'm taller than she is. I would have if she was nice, but nope. So I tell her again, lady, I don't work here, find a staff member to help you and I walk away. As a tall person, this has happened more than once. Ask us nicely if you have to ask at all, because we're not your personal step stools. I should add, I normally always help anyone who asks, just not this lady. I think this one really boils down to more or less being a decent person. You know, if you go up to somebody and say, hey, I'm really sorry, I can't quite reach this, could you grab it for me real quick? Most people probably would. But you act like a total jerk to somebody and then say, hey, I need you to come grab this for me. You think they're gonna stop and help you? Probably not. This next story is by Funny and Not. Everyone everywhere thinks I work there. I've worked my whole life in customer service of some sort or the other, so I've had a bad tendency of helping people if they look lost or confused or if I overhear them trying to find something. This drives my teenager bonkers and he manages to disappear when I do this. With it being Christmas, I've been a little too helpful. On Christmas Eve, we had to rush into Barnes to get a couple of gifts, then rush out and hit the road for a six hour drive. There were no employees to be found. I just put something down when an older woman asked if I worked there. I told her I don't, but might be able to help. After a couple of minutes, she was in the checkout lane with an arm full of books for her grandkids. When I finished helping her, a teenage boy asked for help. I told him the same thing as I didn't see any employees. He was super sweet and really wanted to get a book he and his mom might enjoy reading and discussing. I learned his mom has cancer, so I helped him pick out a book after he told me more about her, and recommended a fun journal project with $8 journals. Also shared a lot of things that'll help his mom. I'm cancer free for a year. Well, this went on for almost two hours. I totally lost track of time and my son sitting in the coffee area seemed to be getting a kick out of all the work I was doing. The problem is, I don't mind helping people, especially if they're friendly. Actually, I kind of enjoy it. I was finally able to load up my arms and my son with all the items I needed. As we were standing in line, there were people I helped ahead of us. 
Each one told the checkout lady how grateful they were for a shopper that stopped her own shopping to help them. The manager was called over. She said she had heard about it from the others already. As a Christmas gift and thank you, the manager covered the cost of my purchase and offered me a job. I politely declined the job, but not covering the expense. So, I don't work here doesn't always have to be bad. I hope you all have a fabulous new year. Honestly, I suppose if there ever was a time to stop and help your fellow person, it would be during the holiday season, right? All I know is if I was in a place like Barnes and I was looking for books and I just had no idea what to look for or maybe what would make a great gift for somebody and some random person that just seemed to have a great mind around it and made some suggestions, pointed me in good directions, came along and helped me, I know I would be incredibly appreciative. And our final story of the day is by OKSpray7404. No, I will not run your samples. Hey, I just found the sub and got a story that has nothing to do with retail or food service. I worked as a technician doing service calls, mostly calibration and third-party certification, for some specialized and very expensive pieces of scientific equipment. So I go on a call to this rather large facility, just to routine yearly calibrate and recertify. It takes about two hours of actual work. There's a big open lab space with lots of people, but the instrument room is down the hall and pretty cramped has a few different things in there. As I'm going through the start of the procedure, a young woman comes in to use a different instrument. We exchange pleasantries. She's having some trouble with the startup, so she asks if I can help. Very friendly. Tell her, I'm just here for the spectrometer, not really familiar with the equipment you're working on, but can take a look. Hard to say no to a pretty girl. Ended up spending about half an hour together, but got it figured out, and I watched her run the first sample. Then I went back to my spectrometer and she ran a few more samples herself. So this is the part where it gets weird because she gets up, tells me she's going to grab a coffee and can I be a deer and when the sample is done to put in and start the next one. So pretty girl or not, I got my own job. Again, I tell her, I'm just here for this particular spectrometer and I'm not allowed to touch your samples. Should also mention that I was wearing a company polo with the logo of my employer, but more importantly a big red lab visitor badge. Her response, oh doctor so and so won't mind, thanks a bunch, and leaves. Not my circus, not my monkeys, an hour or so passes, I'm about halfway done when the girl and a middle aged guy come in. Her first words were, doctor so and so, this is OP, why didn't you run any samples? I repeat my mantra for what is probably the fifth time today. I'm just here for the spectrometer. Now this guy is a lot quicker than the girl. He asks me for my work order, which I show him, and he barely glances at it, thanks me, apologizes for the confusion, and that is when my annoyance with the young woman who tried to offload her work to yours truly got the better of me. Dr. So-and-so, I could not help but notice that the samples also have chain of custody paperwork and they were left unattended and unsecured. Is that a problem? The woman's face goes from mildly embarrassed red to pale. The guy does not blink, tells me that he appreciates my concern, he'll take care of it, picks up the samples and leaves taking the girl with him. He came back half an hour later as I was finishing up and started running the samples himself. I left shortly thereafter. The end. To answer a few likely questions, apparently she thought I was an intern, have no idea what happened with this woman afterwards, was she disciplined, fired, was the incident completely ignored? I just don't know. I never actually said the words, I don't work here, made it pretty clear that I don't though. The samples in question have nothing to do with forensics or anything like that. They were environmental samples being tested for certain pollutants. The chain of custody was likely there for regulatory compliance, though I suppose there is a possibility that this was part of some lawsuit. Again, I just don't know. Honestly, if anything, I think I'm just kind of hoping that this makes them think twice in the future about, I don't know, trying to be a jerk and offloading their work to other people while they go on a coffee break. Kind of awfully specific, I know, but I mean, it's a pretty big jerk move. I know people need their coffee and all, but... Even if OP was an intern, they said they were there just for that spectrometer, not to shift over and help you on your work. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. 
And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.